Hi all, let's have a look at the round 10 game between Gata Kamsky and Wesley So in US Chess Championships in St. Louis. This is very, very dramatic context. Of course, Wesley So had been forfeited the round before for making notes on his score sheet, which apparently uh, were about double checking and triple checking variations and taking his time. But he had been warned about it uh, apparently twice before. So the whole world's like talking about that at the moment. And we have this, he still has two games to play though, to finish this particular championship edition. So Gata Kamsky hasn't lost with the white pieces since 2012. And he's a great exponent of the London system, which I refer to as the dreaded London system. After d4 knight f6, Gata Kamsky plays knight f3. And after e6, are we going to get the dreaded bishop f4? No, actually, Gata Kamsky played g3. So we have a Catalan territory and quite a trendy move here uh, as well as d5 is this other one almost as many games actually b5 with the idea of the quick fianchetto it is also trying to exert generally a light square pressure you see a light square pressure being exerted and if the pawn is challenged it can, might just go forward gaining a bit of space and generally also it might be useful for black to gain space on the queen side later so let's see what happens. Bishop g5, a very interesting decision because white is prepared actually here to give up the dark square bishop. He hasn't set his center in concrete yet. The pawn can still go to c3. He can still put pawns on dark squares. He might be wanting to give up this bishop and use the knights and try and get some key squares with the knights. In fact, we see c5 now, bishop g2, bishop b7 parrying that diagonal c3 and the pawns get fixed now where's the actually plays in this position the most popular move actually on my book c takes d4 so we get this fixed pawn structure a little bit so without that pressure on the center uh, how useful is this bishop on g5 is it needed in fact after castling wesley so plays h6 and it's a big decision does white want to retain that bishop Move it back here in this structure. It's sometimes a target. If it's on f4, it can be a target to things like knight d5, or knight h5 even, or even g5. If it goes back further, it doesn't seem particularly with great prospects uh, here. And in fact, bishop takes f6 was played, giving up the bishop pair. But uh, now this solid center, you see that black's already used up. The, the central pressure, the tension has gone from that center. So it's quite a solid structure still, even though the pawn's not on c3 here, uh, it's difficult to break down the center. But there is a slight downside that the light squares are weaker. With this move, it's weakening some more light squares. Black castles, knight c3. It looks a bit provocative because it's encouraging b4, uh, which is actually played. And there's no point using it, trying to use this square. Black's always got d6. He hasn't committed the pawn to d5 yet. It just goes here as though knight f4 to h5 is the plan now. Lit up with the idea of knight e2. So queen b6 here, yeah, which abandons the king side. <clears throat> and some commentators were expressing a little bit of surprise here because it looks as though white might be building up some sort of attack. But for the moment, it's clear that black's bishop pair and in particular the light square control. And also the queen side prospects uh, give black a lot of chances for counterplay potentially if he's not going to get mated that is knight f4 he has to watch out for for knight h5 surely or does he allow it well in fact he doesn't create another weakness it's tempting here to play something like g6 perhaps but no actually rook c8 is played so here we see knight h5 and the bishop just retreats so e7 and this is getting a little bit dangerous with this knight pointing at g7 there's very interesting tactics here knight e5 was played uh, offering the exchange of bishops but also looking at f7 so you've got two knights looking at g7 and f7 and in fact there's some crazy lines here black played bishop takes g2 um, uh, to which there wasn't the routine capture recapture in fact queen g4 was inserted but there's even some other crazy stuff if white wanted to force a draw uh it turns out this is an engine line of course knight takes g7 
offering a rook. This is absolute madness. Takes queen h5, looking at f7. And it seems white can actually pierce through black's defenses like this uh, with the idea of blocking for knight h5 now and queen g7. Takes rook f1. It's virtually uh, a very forcing line. And if white wanted you know, desperately to play for a draw, he could do this. Uh, tactical sequence knight g6 threatening queen h8 and get a perpetual check it's just an amusing uh, thing to check out but uh, no uh, not so clever but still pretty direct queen g4 instead of the recapture for the moment and yes uh, technically g5 can pair in this but we don't want to create unnecessary long-term weaknesses bishop g5 seems a lot more solid so white's now recapturing but now queen b7 check and this is a very fine queen on that diagonal the light square pressure is evident here off the king g1 this knight's kicked back uh, now we see knight d3 perhaps white could have considered h4 here now to try and break his way to g7 but f5 with accurate play with f5 this should be okay this position here should be okay for black uh, so h4 wasn't played. We have knight d3, a bit of a retreat. Well, a retreat, knight d7, uh, h4. And now the bishop just goes back, actually, to f6, defending that g7 that idea. It's parried. So rook fc1. And now a5. And you see that, actually, yeah, black's pieces have... Uh, some great uses the queen on that lovely diagonal the knight is a bit committed and black might be gaining some more space on the queen side soon we see knight d f4 and it might be a slight inaccuracy it allows a nasty looking pin this move perhaps more interesting would have been this uh, just a waiting move basically uh, keeping control of the e4 square for example like this just waiting around uh, but um, ultimately it seems black might be doing quite well we're breaking the center like this later so I'm, I'm not sure it, it seems a bit of a tricky position uh, so knight f4 was played anyway so knight f4 d f4 which suffers a side effect this queen e4 a nasty pin on the knight the queen unpins but now bishop e7 we see an issue emerging that g6 threatens to win a piece in broad daylight g6 threatening to win that piece in broad daylight. Queen b5, counter-attacking the knight, the knight retreats. Again, g6 now threatened, renewing the threat. Queen d3, trying to make space, you know, if it takes, then the knight's got f4. Queen b7, again, g6 here, trying to, trying to win the knight. Knight g2, and the knight's got f4 for the moment, but e5, again, g6, renewed again. D takes, D takes, still G6 is threatened. And here White has to weaken himself to actually save this knight. It's been a real problem this knight. Uh, White has to play a horrible looking of G4, weakening H4, just to give G3 for the knight as a retreat. So we see knight G6, and it looks pretty bad actually already for White now. If he's losing this pawn, his king's safety doesn't look too good. Uh, now white played queen f5 and technically one of the more um, amusing looking moves here which might even offer black an advantage would have been to take a forcing move uh, it's not the top kind of move technically but uh, it, it's quite interesting for black this position uh, but uh, maybe even stronger is not uh, to do that but in fact keep the queens on for maximum torture here because white has king safety issues so bishop takes h4 was played looking at f2 and white dare not take on h4 this this combination of the knight and the f3 and g2 squares will be absolutely lethal so the bishop's pointing horribly at f2 here and if only it could be joined with say a rook coming to d2 or queen coming to e2 so just this f2 looks a bit sensitive now potentially we have knight e1 and now move rook e8 now in line with making use of the bishop maybe technically best it seems was taking on c1 to reduce white's resistance here on that d file 
Uh, for example, we have rook d8 for rook d2. Looks pretty strong. It, white can't actually contest the d file here easily. When you control the file, you can use it laterally for attacks, and already we've got an attacking piece ready to, to cooperate with rook on d2, which would be a beautiful rook. Uh, so that kind of thing is difficult for white to defend. But uh, Wesley's move also carries a lot of venom, rook e8. Ideas like e4 and rook e5, and then maybe even rook g5 if the queen isn't being trapped in the meantime. So we have rook d1. Uh, now this, this means you know d7 and d5 are controlled with cooperation. If e4 we've got d5, we've got d7. Uh, so yeah, we see rook a d8 contesting the d file. But you see that that's um, a less powerful version than, than taking in the rook d8. Yeah, this contesting this d file unfortunately. But still, black's a pawn up. Unfortunately, from Wesley Sow's perspective, there's still some work to do here, it seems. A little bit of work. Knight g2. Queen b5, though. And there's going to be a cooperating piece, though, coming if the queen comes to e2 here. So all of a sudden now, yeah, white's pieces just look a bit awkward here. White doesn't want to retreat here and allow the horrible double pawns just to protect e2. That looks absolutely horrendous with the double pawns. And there's still queen e2 there. So this queen b5, yes, energetically trying to get into e2, for example. We see rook takes, rook takes, and the queen comes back to protect e2, among other things. Queen d5, cementing control of the d file, finally. Also, queen f3 looks at g4. The, this is just looking terribly weak, this king side. Queen e2 defending at least with uh, the f3 square. But queen d2. And the king comes to rescue here to try and defend things. So white is trying stubbornly, a trademark of Gatakamsi, to stubbornly defend, even when technically, you know, worse. But uh, he's significantly worse here. And um, black now puts on the squeeze on the queen side with a4. Kind of a waiting move, saying, well, what is black actually doing? Can't move his king, he's going to lose his queen. Can't move his queen, he'll get mates on left two. He's a bit paralysed here. Doesn't want to move his knight back, he'll have double pawns. Where's the rook going? Uh, actually, knight e1 was played. He finds a move. Queen d5 threatening the crude mate in one with queen h1. e4, unfortunately, it weakens the f4 square, which means that actually the whole diagonal is weakened for bishop g5 later, which could be useful to support rook d2. We see queen e6 keeping an eye on g4 and a2. So even this rook now is, is wondering, you know, what can it do without losing the a2 pawn? We see knight c2. And now bishop g5, rook d2 immediately threatened. White can't really parry the d5 without losing a2. Uh, so he plays knight e3, accepting horrible double pawns. Bishop takes, doesn't want to take with the queen, he'll lose g4. So we have horrible double pawns. Black has really been increasing his advantage. And the queen's beautifully centralized here, looking at you know white's vulnerabilities. The rook's well placed, the knight's well placed. And these pawns are ready to do something interesting if needed on the queen side. Black has an excellent position here. White has a very weak pawn structure. We see knight h4. And here, actually, uh, this is getting really, really horrible now. This this pawn's ready to roll. And if the knight moves back, then h5 to try and get queen h3 in. And then the queen and knight could cooperate. We see rook d1. Takes, takes. And now there's tempting moves, a lot of tempting moves, maybe even taking the pawns possible, but king h7. So leaving a lot of options open. d3 protecting a2. Doesn't matter. Takes, takes. And now g6. This idea is coming into mind on, on to go for the king. Knight g3, h5, wrenching open that diagonal. So white dare not take here. He's under great pressure. He can't defend g4. Uh, he doesn't really want to allow the queen in here. If he took, this is just devastating. Check, check, winning the knight, for example. Horrible. So he's losing another pawn, basically. Queen d5. Okay, but here it prevents, because of queen f7, it prevents this for the moment. Instead, we see queen f6 check. And the king moves to e2. And Okay, it looks tempting to play queen f3 and win the knight, but what about queen f7 after? We see just taking some time here, hg, h takes g, winning a uh, pawn there. So now, yep, three, four, five, it's two pawns up, king d3. 
knight g2 and there's things like queen a6 now on the cards cooperating with the knight potentially queen b7 preventing queen a6 check among other things king g7 finally protecting f7 so the queen's a bit freer now to do things like knight takes e3 and queen f3 to win another pawn if needed in fact after queen b5 here yep knight takes e3 was played uh, the queen's looking at e5 here so it's actually if we move the queen we don't want to drop e5 so knight takes e3 and that will be protecting e5 after it as well taking this knight would be protecting e5 we have king e2 sorry not king e2 knight e2 black is now several pawns up of course knight f1 now queen f3 taking one e4 is threatened king c4 it's it's over really so much material down queen d6 threatening mate on the spot with knight d2 that would be a checkmate queen takes b4 check king c3 and now fantastic move knight b1 check trying to drag the king away from the queen king c4 but unfortunately this is a bad skewer diagonal queen a6 check winning material because well white resigned here he doesn't want to lose the knight and he doesn't really want to play this because if I give you five seconds what do you see here knight a3 check yep so queen a6 was the end of that a crushing win so Wesley so shows that even being in the public spotlight in mass media everywhere Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, everywhere, uh, loads of newspapers for the forfeit, the dramatic forfeit, one of the most dramatic forfeits in, in, in definitely US chess history, but also just generally. I can't think of too many really dramatic forfeits like that, like, like experienced in the realm before. But what a bounce back for this crushing game, crushing someone who's a very, very solid player that hasn't lost with the white pieces since 2012, Gaskamski. Uh, Kemsky was a sport though not to play that London system it would have been maybe a different story maybe a bit more solid it seems one of the problems with white's play was weakening the light squares uh, just I'll take away from this game the, the light square weaknesses um, but also it seems you know black was a bit provocative to allow seemingly aggressive knights but they seemed a bit stuck and at one point the h5 knight a tactical liability quite a few occasions with the g6 being threatened and it led to actually white losing the first pawn and then pawn after pawn seemed to drop after that fantastic game especially in the circumstances uh, around wesley so and i hope the best for him in the future and in his final round which will be coming up later today comments or questions on youtube thanks very much